Hello. Welcome to Jesus for All 2. God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible. For July 8th, 2023. Here, you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life. With the goal of hearing all of the Bible by the end of December 2023, increasing our faith and pleasing the Heavenly Father. For the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6 reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Second Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7 reads, For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 7 reads, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 30, in the Amplified Classic reads, The fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life, and he who is wise captures human lives for God as a fisher of men. He gathers and receives them for eternity. Amen. Our Lord and Savior, in the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 28, but he said more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And so the word of God that we shall hear today are Psalm 35, Proverb 8. The New Testament reading will be from the book of John, chapter 1, chapter 4, right, I'm Pardon me. The book of John, chapter 4, verses 1 through verses 54. The Old Testament reading will be from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 12, verse 1. No. Verse 12. Chapter 12, verse 1 through chapter 13, verse 14. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible. Copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson, Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. Unless otherwise noted, and there was a reading today from the Amplified Classic Version in the introduction. I'd like to thank every listener of Jesus for All, too. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that... Your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and your grace to be able to walk in those promises. I pray if it is a benefit to you that you would share Jesus for all two with another, and if you are inclined, that you would subscribe. And now Psalm 35, and it reads, Plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Also draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my hurt. Let them be like chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. Verse 7, For without cause they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him unexpectedly, and let his net that he has hidden catch himself into that very destruction, let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord, it shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you, delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him, yes, the poor and the needy from him who plunders him. Fierce witnesses rise up. They ask me things that I do not know. Verse 12, they reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. But as for me, 
When they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting, and my prayer would return to my own heart. Verse 14. I placed, paced about as though he were my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. But in my adversity they rejoiced and gathered together. Attackers gathered against me, and I did not know it. They tore at me and did not cease. With ungodly mockers at feast they gnashed at me with their teeth. Verse 17, Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue me from their destructions, my precious life from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Let them not rejoice over me who are wrongfully my enemies, nor let them wink with the eye who hate me without a cause. For they do not speak peace, but they devise deceitful matters against the quiet ones in the land. They also opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha. Our eyes have seen it. This you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silence, O Lord. Do not be far from me. Stir up yourself and awake to my vindication, to my cause, my God and my Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Verse 25. Let them not say in their hearts, Ah, so we, so we would have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion, who rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor, who exalt themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad, who favors my righteous cause. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Verse 28 and last, and my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, are every of us the hearers. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. And now, Psalm, Proverb 8. And it reads, Does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on the top of the high hill, beside the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O you simple ones, understand prudence, and you fools, be of an understanding heart. Listen. For I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things. Verse 7. For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands, and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. Verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me kings reign, and rulers decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the ways of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Verse 22, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. 
I have been established from everlasting from the beginning before there was ever an earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the primal dust of the world. Verse 27. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his inherited world. Let me take that again, verse 31, rejoicing in his inhabited world. And my delight was with the sons of men. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. Verse 36 and last. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, are every of us the hearers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And now the New Testament reading, continuing now in the book of John with chapter 4. And it reads, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sinchar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Verse 7. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I might not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. Verse 17, The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have that well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Verse 24. 
God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Verse 26, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this point his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, What do you seek, or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her watering pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Verse 34, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. Do you not say, There are still four months, and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages, and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of the city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now after the two days he departed from there and went to Galilee, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things he did in Jerusalem at the feast, for they also had gone to the feast. 46. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my son dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servant met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed, and his whole household. Verse 54 and last. This again is the second sign Jesus did when he came out of Judah into Galilee. And this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, are every of us the hearers. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And now the Old Testament reading, continuing today in the book of First. Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12. The book of First Chronicles, continuing today with chapter 12. And it reads Now these were the men who ca came to David at Ziklag while he was still a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, helpers in the war, armed with bows, using both the right hand and the left, and hurling stones, and shooting arrows with the bow, 
They were of Benjamin, Saul's brethren. The chief was Ahazer, then Joash, the sons of Shema, the Gibbonite, Jezel and Pelet, the sons of Azmaveth, Barat Kaya, and Jehu, the Anathahite, Ishmael, the Gibbonite, a mighty man among the thirty and over the thirty, Jeremiah, Jahaziel, Johanan, and Josabad, the Gedarite, the Gedarathite, Eluzai, Jeremoth, Beliah, Sheremiah, and Shephatiah, the Haraphite, Elkanai, Jisha, Azarel, Joser, and Josabim, the Korahites, and Jola, and Zebediah, the sons of Jerom of Gedor. Some Gadites joined David at the stronghold in the wilderness, mighty men of Valia, men trained for battle who could handle the shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. Ezer the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmanah the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Elel the seventh, Jahanan the eighth, Elizabeth the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Machabani the eleventh. These were from the sons of God, captains of the army. The, the least was over a hundred, and the greatest was over a thousand. These are the ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it had overflowed all its banks, and they put to flight all those in the valleys to the east and to the west. Verse 16, Then some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. And David went out to meet them and answered and said to them, If you have come peaceably to me to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if to betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look and bring judgment. Then the spirit came upon Amasai, chief of the captains, and he said, We are yours, O David. We are on your side, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you, and peace to your helpers, for your God helps you. So David received them and made them captains of the troop. And some from Manasseh defected to David when he was going with the Philistines to battle against Saul. But they did not help him, help them, for the Lord of the Philistines sent him away by agreement, saying, He may defect to his master Saul and endanger our heads. When he went to Ziklag, those of Manasseh who defected to him were Adna, Josabad, Jedeiel, Michael, Josabad, Elihu, and Zilathai, captains of the thousands who were from Manasseh. And they helped David against the bands of raiders, for they were all mighty men of valor, and they were captains in the army. For at that time they came to David day by day to help him, until it was a great army like the army of God. Verse 23, Now these were the numbers of the divisions that were equipped for war, and came to David at Hebron to turn over the kingdom of Saul to him, according to the word of the Lord. Of the sons of Judah, bearing shield and spear, 6,800 armed for war. Of the sons of Simeon, mighty men of valor fit for war, 7,100. Of the sons of Levi, 4,600. Verse 27, Jehoiada, the leader of the Ammonites, and with him 3,700. Zadok, a young man, a valiant warrior, and from his father's house, 22 captains. Of the sons of Benjamin, relatives of Saul, 3,000. Until then, the greatest part of them had remained loyal to the house of Saul. Of the sons of Ephraim, 20,800. Mighty men of value, famous men throughout their father's house. Of the half tribe of Manasseh, 18,000, who were designated by name to come and make David king. Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. Of Zebulun, there were 50,000, who went out to battle, expert in war, with all weapons of war. stout-hearted men who could keep ranks. Verse 34 of Naphtali, 1,000 captains, and with them 37,000 with shield and spear. Of the Danites, who could keep battle in formation. 
battle formation 28,600. Of Asher, those who could go out to war, able to keep battle formation 40,000. Of the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh from the other side of the Jordan, 120,000 armed for battle with every kind of weapon of war. Verse 38, all these men of war who could keep ranks came to Hebron with a loyal heart to make David king over all Israel, and all the rest of Israel were of one mind to make David king. And they were there with David three days, eating and drinking, for their brethren had prepared for them. Moreover, those who were near of them, from as far away as Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, were bringing food on donkeys and camels, on mules and oxen, provisions of flour and cakes of figs, and cakes of raisins, wine and oil, oxen and sheep abundantly. For there was joy in Israel. Chapter 13 Then David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. And David said to all the assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it is the Lord our God, let us send out to our brethren everywhere who are left in all the land of Israel, and with them to the priests and Levites who are in their cities and their common lands, that they may gather together to us. And let us bring the ark of our God back to us, for we have not inquired of it since the days of Saul. Then all the assembly said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David gathered all Israel together with Shihor in Egypt to as far as the entrance of Hamath, to bring the ark of God from kirjath Jerem. And David and all Egypt went up to Balah to kirjath Jerem, which belonged to Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God, the Lord, who dwells between the cherubim, where his name is proclaimed. Verse 7. So they carried the ark of God on a new cart from the house of Abinadab, and Uzzah and Ahio drove the cart. Then David and all Israel played music before God with all their might, with singing on harps, on string instruments, on tambourines, on cymbals, and with trumpets. And when they came to Chidon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to hold the ark, for the ox stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and he struck him, because he put his hand to the ark, and he died there before God. And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. Therefore that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. Verse 12. David was afraid of God that day, saying, How can I bring the ark of God to me? So David would not move the ark with him into the city of David, but took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. Verse 14 and last for today. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months. And the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. Amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, are every of us the hearers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the word of God in the book of Psalm. Chapter 107, verse 20, and it reads, He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Amen and amen. And now Psalm 28, a psalm of David, and it reads, To you I will cry, O Lord my rock. Do not be silent to me, lest if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary. Do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds, according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Verse 6, Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. Verse 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is my strength, and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Verse 9 and last, Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also, and bear them up.
forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are our rock. Thank you for hearing our prayers as we lift up our hands to you. O oh Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask for mercy. Let there be no malice or mischief in our hearts. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for being our strength, shield, trust, and help. O oh Lord, in Jesus' name, we rejoice. Thank you for anointing us, saving us, nourishing us, and shepherding us forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.